So that last 5K, I decided, you know what, I want to get under 120. I thought, okay, I can get there, um, but I'm going to have to push, and I had to dig deep. And so usually when I get into situations like that, I start thinking about events and people and uh, memories that I have that motivate me. What's up, everyone? Happy Easter. Hope you all have had a great weekend. I had an awesome weekend. I ran the Tomoka Half Marathon, and here is my race recap. So this was my second year running Tomoka. I ran two years ago um, in 2019. I did the half marathon then, I did the half marathon uh, yesterday. Um, it's actually kind of funny how this whole race happened. So I had no intention of running this race because if you've been following me on Facebook or Instagram or wherever, you've, you've known that I've been focusing more on the 5K and not so much the half marathon. And so earlier this week, I saw a post from Tomoka saying they were going to open up 50 additional you know, half marathon spots. So I was like, oh, you know, that's cool, whatever. Then I looked at the weather and I said, okay. This is my sign. So here in Florida, usually in April, we do not get the weather that we did this weekend. So this weekend, it was in the 40s and 50s at race time. <clears throat> Wind was blowing. It was beautiful. It was perfect running conditions, like perfect. Um, so that was my sign. Okay, I needed to register. And so I did. So I got in right as they opened up those extra spots. And it all just kind of worked out because one of my other running buddies had a couple hotel rooms. And... A bunch of us got those into those rooms and we were able to crash there and it made life a lot easier. So, uh, Tomoka, the morning of, um, the only real concern I had was the breeze, the wind. Um, I knew uh, going into it that I haven't done any half marathon specific speed work. I've done a lot of 5K stuff, so I've, I've run at five flat and I've run at, you know, super easy, but there hasn't really been anything around, you know, six flat or so. So going into it, I really didn't have any expectations besides I just wanted to run well. I wanted to run strong. Um, I knew I had the mileage, but just wanted to see what happens. Um, so the race started, and I hung back in the beginning, let some people go. I knew there were some fast guys. I recognized a few of them, and I pretty much just let them go. Uh, so went through the I got my splits down in front of me. So we went through, uh, I went through the first couple miles at 609, 608. Uh, felt really comfortable, really relaxed. Um, so the course this year was a little different than it was two years ago. So this year it started in a different park, but it was still kind of an out and back. Um, so we got going, got on the trail, or the paved pathway, it's not a trail. Got on the paved pathway, you know, clipped those first few miles, 609, 608. Things felt really good. Things got settled in around that point. Um, there was two guys that took off and they were way ahead. And then there was another couple people in front of me, and then another person passed me. So I was sitting around sixth or seventh place or so, and I thought, you know what? I want top five, and I think I can do it. So those next few miles, I, I sped up a little bit. I went 559, 557, and then we started getting to a little bit of not a hilly portion, but kind of a kind of a technical part where we kind of went through these neighborhoods and parks and whatnot. And then I dropped down to 605, 607. Then we hit the turnaround. So one thing I love about out and back races, probably the only thing I love about out and back races, is when you're coming back, you see everyone. And I love getting the, you know, the cheers, the high fives, the good jobs, you know, the whole way coming back. And I love giving those things to people. Um, that's what makes those, these kind of races fun. So I hit the turnaround. Uh, I knew I started counting people. I was about two minutes behind the leaders at that point. Uh, and I counted myself in fifth place. I thought, sweet, top five. The guy behind me is fading. The guy behind him is fading. Let's just run strong. Let's run comfortable and let's get there. Um, so we went through the next couple miles, um, 602, 603. I went through the mile nine at 601. Um, and then the 15K, I think I went through in just under 57 minutes, uh, which was awesome because middle of the race, I kept thinking, you know what? When I ran at, at Gate River Run in Jacksonville, the, the the Gate River 15K, I ran 57.30 or something up there. And I just went through the 15K split in a half marathon faster than that. So that was really reassuring to know that I was well ahead of pace. Um, I shouldn't say well ahead of pace, but I was right where I wanted to be. Um, right after the 15K, things got a little hairy. And not bad, but at that point, um, <laughs> a couple of things happened. One, the person that was in front of me, I had no idea where he was. I had lost contact with him. 
We had gone by all the half marathoners at that point. We were going a different route, and I knew he was way ahead. He was probably going, you know, five forties easily because there, there's there's no catching him. And the person behind me didn't see him either. So I literally was in no man's land. There was probably a good minute plus ahead of me and minute plus behind me. I had no idea where I was. And at that part of the course, you kind of get out on this main road. And I remember at the start of the race, the race director said, Now, if you're running and you don't see any people on the course or you don't see any volunteers, you're probably on the wrong, the wrong route. I'm like, all right, well, I'm looking around and I see no one. There's no signs. There's no mile markers. There's no water stops. I literally had, I, I thought I was off course. So I thought, well, might as well just keep running. I know I'm going the right direction. So I kept running and eventually... I, I saw a water stop and I thought, okay, good. <laughs> we're, we're on the right track. But at that point, um, it's a gradual incline kind of back towards the park. Not enough to really you know, show up on an elevation profile, but enough to where at mile 10 and mile 11 of a race, you're feeling it. So once I hit the 10 mile mark, uh, I think I was just under, uh, maybe just under 61, maybe 62. I don't remember. Um, I think it was just under 61. I don't, anyways, uh, at that point I was, I was feeling, it. I could tell that I had not done any half marathon training and it was starting to get a little difficult. Um, my left hip flexor started cramping up and I remember with about 5k to go, I felt my leg almost swing. Like it felt like it was swinging. I wasn't flexing enough. It was just swinging around to kind of get going forward. And I thought this is not good. And, uh, yeah, so I just kind of kept trudging on. Um, had to dig deep a little bit, um, especially without that half marathon speed work. Uh, you know, I've done five, done easy pace, but that half marathon wasn't there. So that last 5K, I decided, you know what, I want to get under 120. I thought, okay, I can get there, um, but I'm going to have to push, and I had to dig deep. And so usually when I get into situations like that, I start thinking about events and people and uh, memories that I have that motivate me. So I, I remember thinking about my wife and hearing uh, Natalie cheer me on when I qualified for Boston and you know, replaying those words in my head. I was thinking about my daughter Paisley and running her first race with her and how excited and how happy she was. And my son Adam, you know, last week he said, Daddy, let's go run. Daddy, let's go run. I said, you know what? Let's go. And so we went out and we ran. My three-year-old son wanted to go running with me. And that was... That was awesome. You know, each each little bit during that last five, those are the things that I try and recall because that's what keeps me going. That's what keeps my body moving, and that's what helps break up um, those demons, I guess, that come into your head. Um, so I got to about a mile to go, a mile and a half to go, and I remember thinking, oh, okay, I see the hotel. The hotel we were at was 1.5 from the finish. I thought, okay, I got to the hotel. Now I just got to get to the finish. Um, but this finish, you run around the park that you start at. And there's a lot of winding and turning. And with my hip feeling weird, it was just, it wasn't happening. Um, so I, I slowed down a little bit. So I went 611, 616, and then 627 that last mile. I finished in 120.35, according to my watch. So pretty close to what I was hoping for, I guess halfway through that race, about 120. Um, interestingly enough, I, I thought I was still in fifth place, but apparently... I think the guy who was in third, he missed a turn, and somehow he kept, I don't, I don't know how he missed a turn, um, but I found him on Strava, and I realized that, okay, he definitely missed, and he ended up uh, not even crossing the finish line. Um, so I thought I was in fifth, but I actually finished fourth, which is pretty cool. I think two years ago, I came in sixth or seventh, um, but I was five minutes slower two years ago, which is crazy, because you know, two years ago, I thought I was in great marathon shape, and you know, fast forward two years, here I am running five minutes faster. Uh, I actually won my age group, which was surprising. I thought there were some guys ahead of me that were in my age bracket, but actually there was not. We were four different age divisions, which was crazy. Um, so I finished fourth overall, uh, first in my age group. Um, one of my, my teammates, uh, Corey, he came in top 10 uh, with a huge PR, so congrats to him. And one of my other running buddies, Scott, who has been one of my biggest supporters throughout the last couple of years, um, he ran a huge PR, which super proud of him because he also had to run deep for that. So what's next? I think what is next is actually uh, the 5K that is my goal race about a month from now uh, on May 9th or 8th. Um, but I'm going to do a couple time trials leading up to that. 
so everything this week is all about recovery. Um, just kind of getting my legs back. I've been very sore today and I'm ready to take a nap. So, so leave a comment down below. When is your next race? I want to know because we're now hitting the summer months and things start getting exciting. And I'm super pumped to start racing more this summer. Got a bunch of 5Ks lined up, ready to go. Super excited for that. Actually, I'm just excited to race. I miss racing. That was probably the best part about this weekend is there was about a thousand runners out there, which was, oh, it was awesome. I loved it. Um, but yeah, so let me know when your next race is and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you are not following me. Uh, we are growing on this channel and I'm super pumped and we'll see you next time.